Welcome to the Wildcast Podcast, coming to you from Wildcast Studios with your hosts, Adam Lund and Jeremy Boucher. Oh, welcome to the Wildcast Studios for another episode of the Wildcast Podcast, your unofficial voice of all things Moncton Wildcats. As always, the fan listeners, I am your host, Adam Lund, and I am here joined by your favorite co hoster, Mr. Starbucks, Mr. PSL, Mr. Appleside. What what do we have this week for us? Uh, Sorry, Mr. Jeremy Boucher. Yes. Uh, so this week we have a shaken. Yeah, not stirred. Correct. Shaken apple crisp oat espresso. Nice. Iced. And? Mm. Tastes like apple crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Which is my, one of my favorite desserts, which you can literally make in 20 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Very simple. Yeah, because last and now for those watching today, obviously it is Thursday. It is not Wednesday. You know by now technical difficulties. It is what it is. It happens if you've been with us for five years, which most of you have. So much better than the drink you had on Monday night. It was a cinnamon something. It was a brown sugar oat espresso. It literally sounded like they made it without apple syrup. Pretty because much. They didn't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. I think that's the same thing. It's just without the apple syrup. It's like a brown sugar syrup instead of an apple syrup. Yeah. This one's much better. The espresso, man, like that's a whoo. <laughs> that's it's a kicker. Yeah. It gives you a good kick which, in the butt. Which for you, you know, we had uh one of our listeners, Kyle, talking to us about having to re record the episode or whatever. And um at quarter to one in the morning he asked me if I'd talked to you yet. This guy <laughs> This guy is the early morning of the two of us. I'm the night owl. That's how we get a lot of our information. But you might be the uh, you might be up tonight with uh, that espresso. Oh yeah, this um, I might be able to get to um, get through a couple episodes of uh, Selling the OC <laughs> on the, on the Netflix season two was just added last week yeah. and uh, yeah OC uh, some nice nice scenery. There are some yeah it's, there's very nice scenery. Very absolutely. nice scenery yeah. on the uh, houses in the, are pretty in the nice OC. too. Yes, abso- absolutely. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, uh, they've got a listing there on the show. It's in Cabo St. Louis, Lu- Lucas. Yeah. Uh, it's like 30, that's in the billions. It's a billion dollar house in Cabo St. Louis, San Lucas. Lucas? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I think it's I remember that one. just a monstrosity. It's the first billion dollar home that's ever been part of the. Oppenheimer Group, which is the real estate company on yeah. on, the, on the show, and it's uh, wow, the knock your socks off, everything that you'd ever want in a house. So if you win the Wildcats uh, 50-50, you're, you're set. Which I did find funny when you're like, if I win the fifty fifty, I'm set. I'm like, we did win the fifty. Yeah, well, we had to split it. <laughs> though. I get that's fair. Actually, I watched a lot of um, million dollar listing. Yeah, that's million a good dollar show listing. too. Yeah, listing. Yeah. Um, that's the one I've been on for five or I think it's year seven or year eight. Um, Douglas element. I always watched it just because if I won the lottery, I want to see what kind of houses yeah, I'm buying down absolutely. It's crazy. down in LA, but like s- selling the OC Layla watches it. And I'm basically like that meme that comes in and I'm just like, what kind of crap are you watching? And then you suck right in. And then I do a graphic or I do podcast stuff and mm. then I end up going, well, who's that? Well, what's yeah. that drama? Why is she mad at her? Oh, that's a nice. And then I'm hooked in. I'm. I haven't watched. I think I've watched most of the second season before. But I will say, on your pumpkin spice drink and your apple cider drink, it has inspired me to go a little bit of Thanksgiving, a little bit of autumn slash Thanksgiving, and then yeah. we'll then we get into ha- uh, Halloween. Mm-hmm. Then we get into Christmas, and then next thing you know, it's trade period. Trade period. <laughs> so um, yeah, but I, you got your espresso. I got my Red Bull. I forgot to talk about this last week. Tahiti, Tahiti treat. treat. Fruit punch, um, classic from my childhood. Uh, turns your tongue red if you have like four or five of them. Mm. Which shout out to playing with my wrestler figurines and uh, demolition, having that red tongue. So yeah, but it's been uh, it's been a fun little quick week of uh, redoing this show. Yeah. So um, welcome in and uh, let's uh, let's see if we can get this done in one take this time. So don't forget, as always, you can follow us on the social media: Twitter Monk to Wildcast, Instagram Wildcast Podcast, TikTok Wildcast Podcast. And, of course, you can like and subscribe on the YouTube. Before I get into the news and notes, are you completely caught up on Amazing Race? I am. I was so invested last night and stressed out. Mm-hmm. I understand that teams kind of work together. Yeah. But last week, 
like not this episode, but the part one of the two parter. Yes. When all three groups worked on worked against Ty and Cat, I was done with the group. I can't. St- I couldn't stand Devin. I don't like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't like how he kind of cheated his way through the tennis by not letting her play. I was. I was like, bro, just hit the ball to the girl the yeah. whole time. Like, yeah. Just hammered at her. Yeah. Um. But I was so stressed out when they were like, spoiler alert, when they were tied and running to the beach. Mm-hmm. Um. But you realize it's it's the edit job, right? Oh, 100 percent. Like. Realistically, they weren't even Devin close. and Amanda were probably a half an hour yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the whole, like, that's what gets you so into the show. Yeah. Is that it's it's the race to the finish. And this it's the dramatic, oh, my God, who's going to get to the mat? But really, it's like the only time I've actually seen. I was going to say, have you ever seen two teams running at the mat at the same time? Because, like, so, they so, show Ty and Cat running, and then they show Devin and Amanda walking, and you're like, yeah, yeah. they're nowhere close, even yeah. though it like looked they, like they, they were. They probably saw uh, Ty and – and uh, I, was it? Ty and – Cat. Ty and Cat literally walking away from the scene or yeah. walking up the sidewalk, yeah. right, as they were approaching or getting out of their cab. So it's like, of course they're going to walk to the map because they know they're yeah. eliminated. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, like, last season – was when it was when it was up in Bathurst where it was that um, the one couple went one way and the boys team, the team of boys went the other way. Yeah. But the couple left first. Right. To get to the pit stop. But the boys went a different way and managed to get there first. Mm-hmm. Like that was the first time that I can remember in a long time where you what what you were expecting didn't happen right um but it, it's all the edit job it happens and it's literally going to happen next week in the finale yeah. too in halifax. Even though the, it, in halifax even though the first place team arrives there 45 minutes ahead of the second place team yeah it's all the edit and that's what makes it an entertaining I, show if you're just... if you were a little kid and you didn't know anything about editing or production or no, no. anything like that you would think that these teams were neck and neck but they're really not. No, they're they're quite a bit um, behind each other. But <laughs> I was just I was basically on the edge of my seat. Like if Ty and Cat don't win and don't get to the final, because mm-hmm. that's the, I think this is the first time I've ever picked someone that has gone to the yeah, final yeah. in this show. I picked a winner in one other one, but I'm just like I was giving the DX suck it. I was so like <laughs> pumped that Devin was Devin and Amanda were out. Oh my goodness, I was pumped, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it'll be a good finale. News and notes from around the queue. All right, so the World Under-17 Championship will be on the island this year. It's in Charlottetown and Summerside. This November goes from November 2nd to 11th. Um, Got to believe there's two guys from Moncton that uh, will be on either Team Red or Team White of mm-hmm. Canada. Yeah, for sure. Denway A... It's hard to look away from a first overall pick. I mean, he's uh, he's getting back to, to game action here. Chances are he he'll suit up uh, Friday in uh, in Bactouche. Uh But yeah, Sean Carrier. I mean, we've we've said it a couple of weeks ago. He's he dom- dominated training camp and and signed his contract, even though it was probably signed two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I can't see a scenario where they're, yeah they, they're both going. And this is, I mean, you've got Team Red, Team White, Czechia, Finland, USA, Sweden. This is, for the European teams, this is where you get the best view of maybe guys you're mm-hmm. looking at for the Euro draft in a year and a half, two years. Um, because like we've always said with the Euro draft, it's not scouting over there. It's mostly connections. It's connections. And, but you... and this is the best way to get a look at a guy with your eyes that two years from now, you can kind of keep that connection going from now until... Mm-hmm. A year and a half from now. Yeah, I mean it, it's connections, but at the same time, you're going to want to see the player. Yeah, right. I'm not going to go and and call up Richie and be like, "Hey, Richie, I know this kid in Ru- in, in in Russia named Sh- Sergey Pukazin, and uh, you should you should draft <laughs> Hopefully he's him." He's not a goalie. Yeah, <laughs> with the name Pukazin. <laughs> you know, it, 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 you should draft him. You know, he's not going to draft him. He's not just yeah. going to take my word, right? Yeah. He's going to get a. He wants to get a, a viewing or two in, and it's the same thing. Like this tournament's a scout's dream. And I wouldn't be surprised if if the Wildcats, even though they're two they're two euros for 
that they've got this year, Gloss and, and Zelensky, can be back next year. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll still have someone in attendance at these yeah. games because uh, America, right? Uh, yeah. America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And you never know. Like yeah. Some of these teams could have a, a, a sump pump uh, dual citizen yeah. scenario going on too. Right. Yeah, uh, where you go and you never know. Something. I mean, they had two Wildcats report to camp yep. this year because mm-hmm. they'd seen us. So these guys are getting a look at Charlottetown. So that's a small advantage for them to be in their rink, see their fans, see the atmosphere. Um, and, you know, you talk about scouting. Shout out to friend of the show, Braden Olofsson. Yep. He's going to be uh, part of the uh, uh, Bathurst uh, scouting staff. So mm-hmm. um, congrats to him. I don't know if we'll be able to have him on around the trade draft period because he might not be able to give us as much information as he usually does, but uh, but good on him. Mm-hmm. Um, one shakeup in the media world. Uh, unfortunately, we have lost an insider, um, especially around the uh, – well, a Quebec insider, especially around the trade deadline. Um, Steve Turcott has now been the, named the Director of Communications, Marketing, and Hockey Management for Shawinigan. So that kind of sucks because he's one of those guys that generally breaks trades – before they happened, and if he's doing that now, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's yeah. kind of a breach of confidentiality, yeah. if there ever was one. That so, I guess we'll have to rely on you know the long on set. Even though he's kind of tailed off a little bit when yeah. it comes to breaking trades, because I think he might have gotten some doo doo there a couple of years ago. Uh, but now it's you know Plant. it's it's Jeff Plant, it's Stefan Larue, RDS, uh, a, a few Jeremy other guys. Boucher. Yeah, I mean. Hashtag insider. That the uh, French account there rumors <laughs> rumor IQ yeah. on uh, on X. I, I oh, got to start calling it X. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did, had no idea he was actually picked up by by Schwinnigan. Uh Yeah, that's uh, you're right. There's not going to be any more uh, any bombs from uh, from him. Nope. Well. He's, if there are, he's one and done. <laughs> that's how yeah, you know. That's yeah. how you know the job didn't uh, didn't pan out or didn't go the way he <laughs> fire. Didn't go the way he wanted. If he starts dropping uh, dropping trade uh, trade bombs, a um, couple names going into the rafters this season. Uh, Victoriaville has announced defenseman Danny Grew will have his number four retired on February sixteenth, and a little closer to home, Halifax uh, will re- retire Nathan McKinnon's number twenty two on September twenty two at their home opener. It just makes sense. I, you know, a lot of the times you wonder if scheduling gets in the way, but I know that uh, I think it's Hot Button Sports had Nathan Kinnon on, and they were talking about having his number retired. And he's like, well, whenever they want to do it, I'll fly in and yeah. get it done. And it just worked out that the home opener is on this 22nd. They can retire number 22. And it just it comes back again to will we see Moncton put a number in the Raptors? Mm. Like it's Well, you say, you say that. Yeah, Adam, and I can report with breaking news here on the Wildcast podcast. What? Yes, Hashtag we insider will, we that we just finally, talked about. We will finally have a jersey number retired. Uh, number 29, Corey Crawford, will be retired by the Wildcats organization in late November. That's all, all right. we can say at this point right now is uh it, it'll be late november it'll be Corey crawford it'll be the first jersey retired by uh the organization don't have a date yet but uh keep uh keep your eyes peeled but if we look at late november schedule um you got charlottetown on the 23rd the thursday wren on the 24th halifax on the 26th and st john on the 30th yeah so you would when you're kind of planning this stuff and you would you kind of want that to fill the building obviously and you want it to be special but you also want it against a team that you know you're going to defeat or make it look you know give you an upper hand but you're you not going to do it on a weeknight no you also want it on a friday night or a saturday or a sunday friday afternoon night. yeah so you're looking at that rouen game on the 24th which will be a big crowd because it's rouen or contender yeah it's going to fill the people are going to come watch a, a contending team or Halifax. who we know their fans travel well, travel well it's a rivalry on a game. Sunday afternoon. You know, you come to Moncton for a four, four o'clock game. It's over by seven. You're back in Halifax by 10. 
you know, it's um, that those are probably the two games that I would assume it would be on because mm-hmm. uh, I think it would be a huge mistake to have it on a weeknight. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you have it against Charlottetown or St. John. I think if you're Richie or Dan, you walk in and go, retirement is the 24th against Renderanda. The building's going to be full. They're a contender. We want to be a contender. Put your big boy pants on. Mm-hmm. Let's let's show, you know, that's a game that you can kind of gauge where you are with a full building and, and see how, like, that's a perfect night for it, I think. Yeah, and if you're, if, if you're looking at, I don't know, over a schedule, but that's probably going to be either the first game of a 3-3 three and three or the second night of a 3-3. Three and three. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're, they're still going to have some juice in their legs here. But Moncton's also going to be coming off a back-to-back because they're at home the night before against yeah. Charlottetown, right? So it's it's um, it's it's going to be an Which interesting... Which is a tough opponent because yep. Charlottetown is the way that Charlottetown plays. Mm-hmm. And never, uh, never back down, never what? <laughs> never give up. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? <sighs> we're at Amanda Huskies. Yeah, so it's first first, first. game of a... First yeah. game of a three and three, twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth. Yeah, that's Moncton, what I St. John Bathurst. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. So they're going to be rested, even though they're on a bus for twenty four hours. They might have so, some yeah. some leg, uh, some bus legs, but uh, you never know. It's it's either on a second of a back to back or a third and four nights against two very good opponents. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, again, I think it'll be Ren. Yeah, Ren. that's my guess. We don't we don't have a date. Uh, all we know it's uh, it's Crawford. It's a jersey ceremony. Does that surprise you a bit? No, I mean, he's got the cups. Yeah. Right? And he's got the, I think that's what you kind of, not, not taken away from Garland or anything like that, but the cups is what's getting his name to the rafters first. Garland will be there. Yeah. You know, if you look at it, no one's nor- worn number eight since he left. You know what other number nobody has ever worn since the player left? 11. 11. Right? Not even so, in preseason. So what do, what does that tell you? Yeah. Right? It, it, they're, they're lining it up for future ceremonies, I think, personally. And I think it's smart because the last, I mean, again, your Garland ceremony, he's still young. He's still got years ahead of him in the NHL. Is he mm. playing on a contender? Not really. God, I hope not. Um, <laughs> is, so is he going to win yeah. a cup? Unless I he's traded or, or signs elsewhere, probably not. Yeah. Is is Pelche going to win a cup? <laughs> I fucking hope so. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> but not in Calgary. Hang on. I hope he does. Not in Calgary. He hopes he does in Calgary. Speaking of Pelche. Yeah. Feeling 22. Pel- feeling 22. He's Jersey uh, 49. Going 49 to 22. And which generally in the NHL means. You got to sell for roster spot. You gotta, yeah. You got a really good chance of. Uh, yeah. Of making it. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, I came out with that article like I think three years ago on the website that we tried to make, and there's a lot of work. Um, that's the thing with retiring numbers in junior hockey. You either have the guy that did immense for your club and broke all the records, like Connor Garland, who went on to the NHL, or you have the guy that was very good, went to the NHL, and won Stanley Cups. And I think two Stanley Cups is probably going to push – uh, Corey Crawford as well as he's retired. So now you can um, kind of bring him in whenever you don't have to worry about Garland's schedule or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think that, but I think, yeah, I think we'll see Crawford this year and I think we'll see Garland next year. Maybe it kind of, kind of like the Nathan McKinning, like the home opener uh, slash second again, game I, I, at I, the start of the season. I don't think it's, I don't think you'll see Garland next year. You don't think so? No, no. You think it, he's, it, it took, he's retired? It, it took this long to get Corey Garland. Corey Garland. Connor. Uh, oh, my God. Corey Crawford. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think it's I, – I don't see it being next year. You're probably looking at – When he retires? Jeez, uh, I don't know. You know, you're yeah. – Because, I mean, the guy so, owns all the what, franchise I, records. What's the like, sudden fast – like, if, if they start retiring jerseys left and right – who are they going to do in four years? No, I'm not saying they have to do one every year. I say, like, this lines up to do Crawford, and then you can do Garland because he set so many records for the club. Yeah. And, he like, he was the face of the franchise for so long and mm-hmm. held all the records. That's why you retire him, and then you kind of wait, and you see what Pelche's career is, and you kind of wait on that or other 
players that you want to put up there. But I think you can afford now to go one and then maybe one next year. I think you're. You no, know, I think you won't see Gar- uh, Garland for another five years. Okay, that's just my. Yeah, I feel I, I, he's. He has to accomplish more at the next level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sure. Halif- Halifax one. could have. Halifax very well could have retired McKinnon's number a lot sooner. Yeah, that's true. What do they wait for? Stanley Cup. Stanley Cup, right? It's it's. I think that's the level. What you that the Wildcats are looking for right now, and it's all about. At the same time, it's which is not a bad bar to have. No, like, and win the Stanley uh, Cup, and which puts Barbashev in there. <laughs> now we're looking at that well, gives he's him got a two, good, right? Yeah. So yeah, he's yeah. easily probably. Uh, down the road, yeah, yeah. sure. Why not? Yeah. When he's retired and his two-year-old son is maybe wearing a Wildcats jersey, right? It, yeah. It's it's that's just there's we've waited how long for Corey Crawford? Fifteen years almost, and so for Garland, you know, maybe by the maybe by the time he's got gray hair, you might see him his jersey. But that's I'm not. Next year I'll be. Pleasantly surprised if it's but give if me it's I'll, five years for sure. Uh, and then uh, five Wildcats are heading to training camp. Uh, Moran's off to Calgary, Lonsbury to Edmonton, Sump Loshing to Colorado, and Plantelski to the Devils. Which I almost typed out that he was going to Detroit for whatever reason. I think maybe he was drafted by Detroit. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I was thinking he was going to Detroit, but he's actually going to New Jersey. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Uh, team that we got going on here in the training camp that's coming to an end wildcast training camp report so we're almost we're almost done like i said uh they go this friday in baktouche but they played two games last week um lost one big in bathers lost one in a shootout against cape breton and if you base things on preseason and i i've had a lot of messages and people were at the rink last Saturday and they're like, well, they got to work. They got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of work to do, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's preseason, preseason. But at the same time, this is the roster they're going with basically. And it, you know, Cape Breton's not going to be a pushover this year. Like they were last year. We're like, we're still having some issues with them. They weren't a pushover last year. We lost like eight games. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They weren't a pushover. Like we thought they were going to be. Yeah. The reason we didn't have that playoff spot earlier in the year was because of all the games against um, Cape Breton. But it's just the two games were such a microcosm of last year. Mm -hmm. They come out and they played really well against Cape Breton. They had 53 shots, I believe, um, 25 in the third period. Then they come out on Sunday or Saturday and it's uh, 15 to 5 in the first period. And then they don't get 16 shots for the rest of the game. Old habits die hard, I guess, but it, it is the preseason and games don't count. We all go back to zero zero, but it's so hard not to look ahead and get a little bit like uh, worried. It's the preseason. I don't give two shits about these games. You know, it, it's these are the games you almost want to lose, right? Because getting into this regular season, you, you definitely don't want to get embarrassed by Bathurst like you did. Uh, and losing to Cape Breton, I mean, it was a shootout loss, right? It's that's more or less what we're going to be seeing between these two teams all year is really close games because they're expected to both be better than they were last year, mm. and only one key- team can win a game when they're facing off against each other. So it's there's going to be a lot of tight games uh, between these two teams, and I mean. Uh, I'm not going to come and complain about a, an exhibition game. It's, it's, uh, it was Simon's first game that he's played probably since the elimination uh, was the last game, yeah. the first game he's played since the elimination game against Halifax. Yep, it was Mavericks' first start. Yes, yeah. like start and go full, mm-hmm. and he didn't get no help. You know, no, he, was, he really didn't. At the same time, it, there's an adjustment period for him too. Yep. He's coming from Junior B to the Q. Which is a huge step. Uh, so it's it's for me, it's nothing to be concerned about. You just make the mistakes now, make them make the, as many mistakes as you want. I I could care if if the team lost one hundred and fifty seven to one, 
in the preseason, I would I would give two shits. I would still be like I I wouldn't care in the preseason. It's preseason. They don't count. Lose all you want right now. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, yeah, that's you're right. You don't and you don't win championships in September. No, you don't. But you want to be kind of putting things together with your full roster near the end of like the preseason, right? Like that's what you're working towards with all the practices. And the 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 Q came out with the R18, and they had the three questions for the Wildcats, and it was what can we expect from the off season deals and the impact of the rookies will play, and and what will Steinman do for an encore and. You know, a lot of his play last year was he would get stretched out and they'd be able to get get him moving across. And it was, well, when you come from junior B, you can get away with that stuff. And and guys don't pick corners maybe like they do in major junior. And and I think as the year went on, he kind of learned it, kind of figured it out. And and I think that was the same. That's going to be the same for Maverick. There's going to be a bit of a learning curve Mm -hmm. on him as the backup playing I, I'm not even going to gauge how many plays, but he, coming from that same league, he's a big goaltender. He slides across well. He's mobile, but from the goaltending issues, you're you're going to have to hopefully Steinman takes the next step. And and that was the thing with Maverick. He didn't get a lot of help on Friday. I think he had two or three goals that were two on ones and three on ones. So mm. it's it's uh, you're right. It's a situation where if they go zero and six in the preseason, everything goes back to zero zero, and we start again. But a couple things I did like, Lounsbury looks a lot faster. Um, the line of Lounsbury, Mueller, and Smith, or Lounsbury, Smith, and Mercier look like a very, very good line of size, speed, and skill. I mean, they had one shift against the Eagles that kept them pinned in for like two and a half minutes mm. and kept getting opportunities. Um, but, yeah, the defense, and Boutin, for people that were, questioning his play, just not seeing him in Gatineau because you're not tuning into a Gatineau game on a regular Thursday when Moncton's not playing. It's a good trade. Yeah, it's a real good trade. People are going to be generally surprised. He doesn't get out of uh, doesn't get out of position a whole lot, and if he makes an offensive move, he gets back in time to, mm-hmm. to make up for it if he gets beat. So that's – you're right. We go back to 0-0. Zero, zero, just – it was funny to see the microcosm of 53 shots and they don't come with a win, and then they ultra the team 15-5, to five and they come out in the second period and fall flat. Yeah, well, I mean, if you really want to judge this team, don't go to the game Friday because they're going to be without yeah. five regulars. And Bathurst has a couple. Of Bathurst, both their goalies are gone to camp. So yeah. they're going to have a uh, two, two, basically two rookies as their goalies for, for Friday night. And it's, again, I don't care if they win or lose preseason games, yeah. but I'm, I would accept or expect them to win, the Wildcats to win, mm-hmm. if you're going up against two goalies that aren't even going to be on your roster. Like, this is literally almost like a rookie game in the first two days of training camp where the Wildcats will be able to have 90% of their full roster playing mm-hmm. against two rookie goalies. So that's – they. I'm expecting them to win. That's – that's. you want to gel as a team, score some goals. Yeah. Goals are fun. Scoring There's, is fun. That's your chance. Yeah, and hopefully, um, hopefully, there's a certain first overall pick that is playing. Um, I would tend to believe he will be in. I have no knowledge, but you should have him in at least try, if he's healthy. Have him in at least one game before, because we've talked to players, and there is a significant first week of camp style game, second week of camp it ramps up a little bit, regular season gets going, and then playoffs is a whole nother adventure. So you want to get him going. Not that he's not going to be ready, but you want to have him in at least one game. And, you know, if you are going, announce that he's playing. Yeah. Right? Give no, you're right. There's a reason to go to Bartouche. It, it's, yeah, because it's not too far. It's only 45 minutes if you speed. I mean, it's literally, I think it's Viternik Vitter- Arsenal's home game, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But it's literally only half an hour away. Yeah. 
Something like that. And for some people, drive a half an hour to come to the Avenir Center. You know, so it's 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 no different. We have to uh, now experience what some of these other fans ex- uh, <laughs> experience on a on a game by game basis. But you know, I'm kind of excited for this game. I've never been inside that rink before. Oh, really? It's a real nice, uh, real nice venture. But s- um, is that where the steamers play? That's where the steamers will play. Mm. That is correct. Steamers. Yeah, for steamers. Yeah. Uh, all right, you ready to talk to a guest? Yes. Perfect. View from the other bench. Steamers. All right, well, we're back again to do a uh, preseason look around the Maritime Division. This week, uh, we're going to the island and uh, to Bathurst. Uh, but we're going to get started with the Charlottetown Islanders. He's been gracious with his time during his golf tour to talk hockey with us, the color voice of the Charlottetown Islanders, Corey Arsenal. Corey, welcome in, and uh, how's the golf game going? Well, guys, uh, first and foremost, thanks thanks for having me. It's always great to chat uh, hockey and the golf game. Uh, you know what? It's been great. It's been a great summer. Uh, you know, got lots of rounds in. Uh, obviously, I like to get it out on Twitter to get a couple digs in. Guys are always asked, how do you do this? You got three <laughs> kids, you got a wife who works full time and you're out golfing. And I said, yeah, that's right. You got to find time, uh, some quality mean time, right? Yeah. So uh, I've got a few rounds under the belt. Uh, I love getting out with the boys and uh, whacking it around the hay field. So, uh, but that's coming to the end. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, frozen ice and uh, pucks getting dropped here and uh, excited for the season to get going. Yeah, I saw you were in Moncton at uh, Moncton Golf Club, I think it was, in Riverview, which always makes me giggle. But yeah. um, I golfed with Tony Smith from 96.9, so next year I'm going to have to get around in with you and uh, hit a ball around the course and just have some fun. But uh, back to hockey, I mean, as long as I've been here, uh, the Islanders have had goaltending, and that's been the strength of the team that steals games year after year, whether it was Matt Welsh or it was um, LaPena or it was the goalie that I cannot remember from Ramuski. Um, this year it's a bit of a, an unknown. You got, uh, Ozulis and, and rookie Nico Boudreau, I guess just what is the feel around camp with, you know, coming into a camp without a certified name goaltender that could carry the franchise? Well, you know what, uh, that's certainly the unknown here right now. And, uh, you know, it has me a little bit on pins and needles. I can only imagine what the coaching staff and, and everybody else involved with the organization is going through as well. And, and you're not wrong. Uh, that certainly is uh, the number one question mark. Um, you know, this is my 21st year broadcasting major junior hockey here in Charlottetown. And, you know, we go back to 10 years with the Rocket in the past 10 years with the Islanders. And uh, we have always had uh, top-notch goaltending. Uh, this year, it's the unknown, right? Uh, Askus Ozols is, uh, comes highly rated out of Latvia. Uh, 18 years old, um, and undrafted, likely to do because of his size, uh, around six feet. And we all know about getting drafted in the NHL. If you're not over six, two, yeah. uh, it luckily doesn't happen, but, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's a bit of an unknown. I know our goaltending and coach Paul drew did a lot of work and Jim did a lot of work and, and, and trying to find a Euro that could come in and, and, and help, uh, you know, stop some pucks. But, uh, and then Nico Boudreaux is a guy that, uh, as well as, you know, a seventh round pick, he's from Shediac. So not too far from you guys there, Northern Moose. Uh, he was a star as a, as a 16 year old last year and played three games with us. And unfortunately two of them were against Halifax where, uh, <laughs> Halifax basically ate every goaltender alive last year, let yeah. alone, uh, Nico Boudreaux, uh, coming up from the Northern Moose. But, uh, you know, last year, Frankie LaPena was, uh, you know, undoubtedly a top five goaltender in the league. We rode his hot start to get some points early on in the season. His trade value was there. Uh, Gatineau went and acquired him and uh, obviously they fell a little bit short but he took us to the finals the year before and then uh, Jake Robier was kind of the cast off that came in and he was their MVP second half of the season not too often yeah. uh, your MVPs they're a goaltender for the first half and a goaltender from the second half but you know the stat that stuck with me is and it's not a pretty one uh, five out of 32 points were acquired from anybody in that other than Jake Robiard and Frankie LaPena. So that's a lot of losses from neither of those two starters were going. And we still lost games with those guys in the net, but they gave us a fighting chance each and every night. Uh, they were kicking out like 39 of 40, you know, 40 of 44, 40 of 43. Uh, you know, goaltending certainly was a strong point, and we were always in games uh, last year and then the last couple of years. This year, a little bit different. All those looked good in camp. 
But I mean, we brought in a Euro and Oliver Shatton, a tremendous kid, but it's an adjustment period like uh, for any player, let alone a European and, and someone from Latvia to come in and get settled down, smaller ice surface, different leagues. So, I mean, uh, if there's a place that I think they would look to upgrade potentially with free agents and whatnot, I know they're scurrying uh, and, you know, every team always wants to get better, but certainly goaltending is, uh, is going to be a certain something to watch here in Charlottetown in, in the opening month. Mm. Wouldn't it, a lot like the Wildcats? It wouldn't be uh, you know a, an Islanders training camp without dipping into the uh, Ontario free agent pool. <laughs> uh, this year, uh, Kyle Powers uh, in the lineup uh, for the Islanders. Uh, not the uh, not uh, uh, jaw dropping stats with uh, with Brockville uh, last year, but the uh, the Pims are a bit of an eye opener. Uh, Eighty five Pims last year. What uh, what what does he bring to the lineup to uh, to Charlottetown? Oh, you're right. And, and you know what? That, to me, that has been a difference maker before we get into the powers. Uh, what Jim Holton and coaching staff are all, all of our coaches are from Ontario. Paul Drew played in the OHL with Plymouth. Kevin Henderson played in the OHL with Kitchener. Guy Girard played in the OHL with Hamilton. And, and Jim Holton played in the OHL as well. And they're all born and bred in Ontario. So it's good to have those connections, right? Basically, have Team Ontario behind the bench, but they are all trans Trans Islanders here now, and 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 certainly uh, you know represent this province with pride. But it's good to have connections, and and we've had great success uh, over the last couple of years bringing guys. And you got to have a program that players want to come to. You got to have a coach that players want to play for. And Jim Holton certainly is the face of our franchise, and you know Coach of the Year in the CHL. Uh, agents and, and families and players alike are going to want to want to come and play underneath them. So Kyle Powers is, is another one. You know, you're right, not eye-popping numbers, but I'll tell you what, he showed up and he wants to talk about eye-popping numbers off the ice, the most fit player in camp. So if you're going to come in to try to make a major junior hockey team, you want to make an impression. He was the most fit of the 50 players in camp, won all those off-ice testing, and it's translated on ice. He's not a guy that's going to and score goals, but he's going to play in the third and he's going to go up against other teams' top players. He's going to play gritty, hard nose, finish his checks. But one thing Jim wants, you know, the Pims are something that we don't want to see. We're one of the most penalized, if not the most penalized team last year. And we just can't afford to give uh, teams multiple chances on the power play. Look at what Moncton can throw out. I mean, I've seen Yohan Lotion rip one-timers on that offside. You know, that that's just going to continue to happen. Jordan Zuma finding a guy wide open back door. Cam McDonald parks in front. You're, you can't give teams these opportunities shorthanded, especially when goal is, is a question mark here right now. So discipline is something that Jim really preaching here right now. And Powers, is, uh, he still wants to be hard to play against. He wants to compete against. And Kyle Powers is a guy that's kind of showed that. And, you know, kind of that Islander style. What we want to do here is, is play hard, be hard to play against, be the team that works hardest. May not be the most skilled, but you know, Pims or them and, and the staff has been preaching about because uh, we just can't take penalties this year. But uh, sandpaper is, is certainly what Kyle Powers brings, and with a chance to, to to develop into maybe a little bit more offensive role as his career develops here in Charlottetown. Yeah, and I mean, no team. Special teams is a key to most turnovers and special teams is a key to most hockey games. And, um, but when you're a younger team, you don't want to be, when you're fighting for points, you don't want to be down, you know, five on fours and stuff like that. But where, um, preseason wise, it's you, we complain about it because we want to play every team, but we also get tired of playing every team all the time, 10, 11 times a year. But it's really tough when you're kind of doing these preview shows to see what Charlottetown is in, in the preseason. But, Based on you know what you've kind of seen, is the strength of this uh, group? Um, is it the defense? Uh, you know, Kiersey, Hinkley, Topolnitsky. Is is that kind of the defense turning to offense? Is that kind of the, the strength of the team, or, or where do you kind of see the strength of this team? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. Um, you know, when I think about the strength of this team, uh, I don't think of defense being probably the strength it's certainly not the weakness either but i i think the strength of this team is coaching for yeah, one whether yeah. that's a good or a bad thing i think it's yeah. a great thing but you know and and then you get into what you have in the roster you know there's some excitement here in charlottetown because of the youth and, and the rebuild has started i mean uh, jim holton's brought a winning program three of the last five years after the year before last 
to the semifinals, first time to the finals. There's been a lot of winning in Charlottetown over the last couple of years, right? And, and you know, it's a bit of a change in your guard here right now. But, you know, we're building through our 17-year-olds. And, you know, you talk about Marcus Kiersey and probably some unlofty expectations to come in, you know, because he skates so well and he's a bit of an offensive flair to him. But listen, he, he won the QMJHL Defensive Rookie of the Year, so he's doing something right. But he's not Lucas Cormier, never going to be that player. As you guys know, how special a talent that, that Lucas Lucas was here in Charlottetown, back-to-back defenseman of the year in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, only defenseman and, and Q history to do so. Right. And, and sometimes you take those players for granted until they're gone. But they're trying to build from the back end, and, and there's no no denying that that's what Jim wants to do. Drafting Owen Conrad in the first round, 20th overall, we hope to think in a couple of years' time we have a poor man version of, of Cormier and Lowen, and we all know how well – they were and, and how vital they were to Charlottetown's success over the past uh, you know four or five years having that pairing so Conrad's the big strapping he's got some offense to his game but he's can play defensive as well and then Marcus Kiersey is as, as good of a skater as there is in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and he has the green light this year to bring a little bit more offense you're going to see him jump into the end Anton Toplinitsky is a guy that quietly you know goes about his business at real good with he's so huge 17 years old is a tough league. 18, 18 and a half. Your 18-year-old year, you kind of see what you have. And even then, it takes sometimes players to be 19, and, and some guys even pop at 20, right? So, yep. you know, their back end is certainly has some promise. But, you know, the strength of the team would be coaching and, and then the youth. That's what has us excited is the 17-year-old core with Marcus Kiersey, Alexi Michaud, Ross Campbell, those three big builds and then Matthew Butler obviously as, as you guys would know created a bit of a stir uh with that signing you know not many players have have back to the queue when they go to Shattuck St. Mary's for a year he had all kinds of options down stateside and he's the guy that uh, is as skilled as any player on this team right now but once again it's an adjustment period for for Butler it's prep school to major junior hockey but uh, i've really liked what i've seen from him so the youth the youth and uh you know a little bit of team speed here we're a quicker team as well jim wants to get up he wants to be f1 in for checking hard back checking playing hard against but not the most skilled in the world but the youth there's some promise here in, in the next couple of years in charlottetown yeah for sure i'm glad you mentioned uh matthew butler because you know obviously I'm a, I'm a wildcats fan but he, what? i'm also a hockey fan right and <laughs> Uh, he's he's a player that I think uh, a lot of fans in this league are are, are going to quickly appreciate, uh, just for you know the skill level that he brings to to the ice uh, every night. And you're right, it's for him to choose Charlottetown is is huge for the league. You know, it's uh, Shattuck St. Mary's is is a well known program now. There's you know some guy named Crosby went there, and uh, and I think he also had the Chicago Seal in his in his back pocket too, which is no slouch of a program. <laughs> Um, but uh, I guess where where do you see Charlottetown fitting into uh, into this division this year? Well, you know uh, that's a good question. I, I see I see two teams, probably maybe three teams. That I think you know Halifax. Obviously, I don't think Halifax for last year. I mean, you lose a hundred goals in an NHL first rounder. The loons don't grow on trees, but I think their defense is as good as, as any team in the league. Maybe maybe the best defense of core in the league, and I think Mathis Russo is a terrific goaltender and really came into his own last year. We talked about 18 years old and, and having patience with players. To me, he's he's a he's a prototypical, you know, kind of kind of speaker. He stole the stole the net from Brady James when everybody in Halifax yeah. thought Brady James was going to be the next great one. Well, I'll tell you, they got a great one in Madison Rousseau, and they, they you know they're not done they're not done wheeling and dealing. Cape Breton, uh, whether or not this was the year to make a run for it, I mean, there's been a lot of struggles over in Cape Breton over the past couple of years, and you know the fan base is growing a little bit impatient. Uh, they're trading picks <laughs> like like their other hot takes over there. But yeah. tell you what, they got to go to the hockey team. Goaltending will be key for them can Ruchia get it done when it comes crunch time but Cam McDonald uh, Cam Squires Cole Burbage 
you know, a big pickup. They got a great back end as well. They're gonna there's gonna be tough games over in Cape Breton if they can get it together. And then Moncton, I mean Moncton's a team that I thought was vastly improved last year. Uh, their pace has picked up. Steinman kind of came into his own there in the second half. They made some moves to get, you know, a, a Vince Collyard. Uh, you know, the uh, twenty-year-old core seems to be seems to be steady. Can Lotion kick it up into the next the next level? And then they got some other guys that are kind of proving. I, I think those three teams are clear ahead. And then I see us and Bathurst and St. John probably uh, with some competitive games there as well. I haven't had a chance to see Bathurst in the preseason yet, but you look at their roster, they got two goaltenders that have gone to NHL camp here right now. Uh, They have some goal scoring up front. Uh, They have an older team there as well. So I don't think they're going to be a pushover. And then St. John, well, they're in a bit of a a rebuild like us and, you know, a bit of an eyebrow raiser when they trade their best uh, center in Cole Burbage at only 18 years old, but they were looking for picks and, and the rebuild. So I think they're in for maybe a tough year in St. John, but I see Charlottetown right there. And, you know, if they can finish third in the division, I think that's success. But I, I see three teams probably uh, a little bit better than what, what Charlottetown has here right now. Mm-hmm. Kind of feels a little bit more even than it has in the past two yeah, years. Yeah. And you're right. Like, you know, I, I teams Halifax that have been bad will through, still get some yeah, wins. Halifax walked through everybody last year. Yeah. I don't see that this year. I do see, like you said, I think it's a, it's going to be competitive. It should be a fun. It should be, shouldn't be a whole lot of blowout games. Should be a competitive game each and every night in the Maritime Division. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, last one, uh, my friend. Before we, we let you go, uh, we're going to let you look into your crystal ball and tell us uh, the two teams who will face off against each other for the uh, Gilles Corto Trophy. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know what? That's that's uh, that's it's quite a crystal ball to look into. But um, you know, in 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 Quebec, I think that everybody probably has Rouen as as a team. I mean, you pick up a Memorial Cup, a twenty year old netminder and a twenty year old star defenseman, both with Memorial Cups under their belt, and with the cast that they have kind of surrounding him. Uh, them, I should say, uh, you know, and Rouen's a tough place to play, a lot of travel, but they got a talented team. Anthony Vero is uh, as skilled as they come as well, battles some injuries. So to me, they're right there. I think Drummondville, Victor are knocking at the door on that side. And then on this side here, I mean, obviously Halifax being into the finals last year, I think uh, they're motivated to get back. Uh, you know, it's not going to be lack of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, funding or anything like that because the owners are ready to spend and, and ready to put a, the big show on, on the road. So I think there's some pressure there as well. I don't know if they got all the pieces in place to, to make a run, but to me, they're, they're probably the team to beat on this side with, uh, I think Bay Camol could be sneaky. I don't really know what Ramuski has, but they're always hanging around. But I, I think the Eastern conference is maybe a little bit more wide open than the Western conference. But to me, Rouen, if I was going to pick two, it'd be Rouen, Halifax, Bay Camol, potentially a chance, Cape Breton, a chance to sneak in. But I don't think there's a given on this side. We'll have to talk about it in December because generally who loads up sometimes the votes to the favorite, but I do remember last year picking Gatineau and Sherbrooke and those two team teams didn't even make it to the final. Yeah. I mean, I think most of the guys are Ren Halifax, which is kind of the two you alluded to. So um, we're not going to hold you to it. We'll give you a chance to re up in December once teams have kind of loaded up. Cause you know, like you said, it, it gets weird too when you get into the top four instead of an East versus West. So there could be a surprise team, so we'll, we won't hold you to any predictions right now. We'll uh, we'll let you make a decision in December if that works out for you. That that's all good for me. <laughs> all right. Well, hopefully you get a couple more weeks of uh, of good golf weather. Um, thank you for joining us uh, today on the the preview show, and um, we'll probably see you maybe in about a month when uh, Moncton's in Charlottetown in October, if that works for you. Listen, boys, don't be strangers when you're coming over here to Charlottetown. Hit me up. We'll get you on air for uh, for an interview. I'm always looking, like you guys, uh, for content and, yeah. and time fillers, we call it. So uh, congratulations on the success of, of your podcast. I see some accreditation, and you guys are around. I see you at the draft, you know, and, you know, the thing's growing. And it's great to have people involved because with, without people like you, there's no league. And uh, it's certainly nice uh, to, to get uh, the message out there. So congratulations on the success so far. And anytime you guys need something, even if it's uh, times two, don't hesitate to call. <laughs> no, we appreciate that. And we can't, we can't put the show on with, you know, excellent media types like yourself um, and around the league that have given us time to make us look credible. So, um, yeah, no, we really appreciate that, Corey. And we definitely will hit you up when we're on the island. All right, guys. Cheers and take care. Thank you. All right. And now, uh, I mean, 
We go from one island to a New Brunswick podcast legend mm. in the making. Uh, we figured he's probably about third on guest appearances, so we'll give him a chance to, to get closer to uh, our guest next week. But um, from Bathurst, we got, uh, you know him, you know his voice, you love his voice. Stick tap of the week intro, buddy. Um, Johnny Rocket. Johnny, how are you? Hello, boys. I'm doing great. Like always, thank you for having me. And how about you guys? Not doing, bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, doing good. Yeah. It's, we have to do this again, but, uh, you know, that's that's life with uh, with technology. So uh, we just kind of talked to Corey, and, you know, I said it's tough to do a show, a preview show, when you don't see all the teams, but you kind of get tired of seeing the same teams 11 and 12 times uh, during the year. But we've seen far too much of Bathurst. So I guess you're up there. Uh, just give us a sense of how things are going in the camp. Are people excited, or how are things going up there? Honestly, I mean um – I haven't felt that in a long time with the Titan. Uh, I have a feeling of optimism, and I really think that the region overall also have that. And there's a few factor. Um, it's going to be like <laughs> some people will say, well, no, it's his second year. But <laughs> it will be the first real year of Gordy Dwyer, and I'm going to explain myself. So basically, like not this off season, but last off season when he came aboard, um, all the guys that he drafted were pre li- lists that were pre made. Already spoke with uh, Sylvain Couturier and Jason Clark at the moment. So he was basically drafting guys that he either haven't seen or haven't had an opinion on them. So that was not really uh, Gordy Dwyer's tr- um, drafting. As for the trade at Christmas, they were all pre-made trade by Sylvain Couturier and some side deals that needed to be completed, again, by Sylvain Couturier. So basically, Dwyer didn't do anything at all that um, he wanted to. Not to count that during the season, he had some free agent from Ontario signed that he did not sign, uh, like Riley Pitt, Mason Chitaroni, Forrester, Tigans. I'm not saying that all those guys were bad, but there were guys that were not under um, the Gordy Dwyer regime. They were under the Sylvain Couturier and Jason Clark regime. Um, so, yeah, and as for last year, I mean, he had players, he had a team, he did what he could with what he had under his hand, but... Last draft, that was his scouting team. Sammy Meyer was in him. They scouted many players. The players that got drafted are the type that they want. The trade that were made, I mean, there were not a lot of trade, but there were still a few, uh, were Dwyer's trade. The team that um, he's putting on the, well, he placed on the ice because the team is completed now, um, is uh, his team. And for once, we have... Uh, GM slash coach with a pair of balls. Uh, big <laughs> cuts were made during the camp. Surprising cuts. Um, for some people, they were surprising. For other people, they were just like total sense because some of those guys didn't perform and they were out- outshined by rookies. Um, like Forrester was cut. Shitaroni was cut. Philip Collette was cut. Noel Ryan was cut. I mean, all guys that played at least last year and some more uh, with the team. So people were expecting like, oh, it's going to be an easy way in. They already played with the team. They've been here for one, two, three years. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to see that. And honestly, um, one of the um, the reason why people are so uh, optimistic uh, is because the team made those decisions because they want to get younger. Yeah, and I, I was reading an article in uh, L'Acadie des Poupelles uh, <laughs> last week about uh, Noah LaBelge, uh, rookie defenseman for, for Bathurst. Uh, there was a part of the article where it says that uh, the majority of his points last year were from the back end feeding Caleb Desnoyers and Emil Guité. They're all three were teammates with uh, with Saint Hyacinth, so um, looks to me like your future quarterback of the of the power play. So, just your thoughts on, on him and some of the other other younger guys on the the lineup with uh, Zachary Delo and uh, Louis Francois Belanger. Yeah, so like I said, I mean they want to get uh, younger. So, like a Noah Labelge last year at training camp at sixteen uh, was one of my standout. In my opinion. He should have been on the team last year, but after seeing him in, well, U18 midget, I don't even remember how they call that now in <laughs> Quebec, to not, to not be offensive. Um, 
it that year really really helped him that groomed him like to be a future in my opinion top quarterback at defense in the league he will play at 17 big minutes he will get more than likely second pair he will get the second power play the all at 17 that guys as uh, a full package pretty much Um, it's his draft year, so I'm kind of curious to see if um, he will get noticed, depending on how does he play, obviously. Um, other guys that, are, that uh, made the team, like Zachary Delo, also at defense. Uh, he's a smaller type of defenseman, but you can see that he has an instinct for offense also. And it's funny because we have many guys at defense, like a Madigan, or like a Bishop, like a Clement. They're, uh, even a, a, a Perron are all either like defensemen, defensemen, Or two-way defensemen, so we kind of needed offense when we only had Ty Higgins. But now with Higgins, La Berge, and potentially uh, Zachary Delo, it will be definitely uh, nice. And at offense, I mean, obviously, we'll have two 16-year-olds with Belanger and Pedigrou. Pedigrou, really good. But Belanger, man, is he's something special. I recall uh, when the Titan, Titan drafted him with the first pick of the second uh, round. I didn't have a clue who that guy was, and I won't mention the name of the guy, but there was one guy still on the table that the Titan didn't choose, and I was freaking pissed off. And I spoke to Jeremy back then, and he kind of called me down, and I have to praise you, Jeremy. Um, that guy is delivering. He remembers me of, uh, of, of Patrice Bergeron and also like a Mathieu Perrault kind of Um And, I mean, those two guys are freaking amazing. So, uh, I can't wait to see him grow uh, as an offensive threat for the Titan. He will play top six 100% this year. He will have more uh, than his share of power play time. I mean, the guy got 10 points in six or six or seven games. Uh, I think it's like seven games uh, during the preseason. It's only preseason, but, I mean, it's definitely something to uh, have a look on. Um And also, like a Samuel Fréchette for me is like basically a small Brad Marsh and with a bit less uh, offensive talent. But I mean, he gets in the heads of anybody on the ice. He will get crap, get their shit out of you with his check. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Titan will be much younger, but also it's really a thing that they needed because I can't remember the last time that the Titan had two 16 year old players on their team that are going to play. I mean, they had every now and then one or two but they were basically fourth liners or a scratch or like seven defensemen or backup goalie playing one game out of 15 games so yeah it will be a really interesting uh year to follow all that look at you being helpful to him mm. making sure that he's jumping or not jumping getting so, off the ledge i'm such an expert <laughs> and i think yeah uh just a quick uh, spoiler spoiler alert uh for next week's show i think we're going to be doing our Rookie of the Year yes. uh, predictions. Yep. So, uh, Prediction episode. You might, uh, Louis-Francois Belanger, you might, uh, you just might hear his name from you me hear his name? Right. On, uh, on next week's show. Not to tip your hand, but you, you, basically you're going to want to tune in next week too. That's all we're saying is just tune in. But, uh, I mean, looking at the roster, I mean, we've seen this team too many times in the preseason <laughs> again. Uh, but they've kind of run our show. Um, I mean, you look at the roster, you've got eight defensemen. Cosmo was just brought in. Um, where do you see the strength of this team? Because is it the defense core? Is it your depth kind of up front? Um, where do you kind of see the strength of the of this team? Uh, yeah, um, I honestly think that it will be one of the first time I ever see, see, see that. But I think our strength is that uh, in the net. Ooh. I mean, with Fleming and Keller, both 19-year-old Fleming showed last year that he had definitely had, like, number one goalie potential uh, with a bad team. So I can only imagine with an average team. And um, Keller that is drafted by the Washington Capitol in the NHL. So definitely that guy has something good in him. Um, definitely one of those guys will get traded at Christmas. <laughs> But no matter what uh, happened... If they can both play well before Christmas, we will have a friggin' huge tandem of goalies. But um, goalies need a good defense. And yes, I think our defense it will be our combined strength with mm -hmm. um, goaltending because we have older guys with experience. I mean, Ty Higgins will more than likely also get treated at Christmas. But before that time, he will be one of the top um, point getter at defense uh, in the queue for sure. Guys like Madigan, like uh, Bishop, 
uh, are good shutdown defensemen. I mean, they're not perfect. Don't uh, I know they have their they have their flaws? But 19 year old, they can play physical. Uh, Harry Clement and um, uh, Emil Perron at 18 are also pretty solid coming in their third year in the league. And you add the two uh, rookies with Delo and La Berge and um, Cosman that uh, I'm kind of anxious to see if it will actually stay. Uh, there, I heard a few rumbling that. Uh, We could possibly have a potential 20-year-old coming out of OHL when their camps are all said and done and the, the scratches has been made. So we'll see. I mean, I, I kind of like what he brought so far. I'm not impressed, but I'm not um, disappointed either. So, yeah, I think uh, our combined defense slash goaltending will be our force this year. The Maritime OHL free agent uh, division, the way it's going. There's not a lot of teams yeah. are going that route but i mean you gotta you you, you want to find the best players you can find and you mm -hmm. need to find the talent and whether that's quebec Nova scotia new brunswick uh, or ontario for free agents you, you do what you can yeah 100 percent uh and, and johnny i know you've listened uh to our show uh for a few years now i'm sure you know what's uh what's coming <laughs> next and uh, i guess we just want you to tell us uh, who you think will uh will go up against each other for the Gilles corto trophy Nailed it. Yes, yeah, so um, definitely out west. I mean, I can't go against the Huskies. I mean, that team is packed. That team will be gorgeous to watch play. Um, and it's always nice to see, like, smaller markets like that uh, getting, like, their all-in kind of year. It's not always, like, the big market with the big bucks, like the, the Halifax, the Quebec. Uh, um, it's so it's kind of cool that they went all-in. And out in the East, I will probably be the lone, well, maybe not the lone wolf, because I think uh, Alex on your uh, last week's show has said the same thing. But I think oh. Moncton will surprise many people and will make it to the final. Uh, I honestly <laughs> think that uh, the Huskies will win the, the Gilles Corto Cup or trophy, whatever they call Um, but I think Moncton will surprise many people. And the reason behind that is I think Moncton's defense is on beast mode like <laughs> when I, I i saw you guys play uh, the last game in bathurst and you were without morin and boutin your offense yeah. looked like friggin epic so i can only imagine with those two the only thing that could either make it or break it for uh, moncton is in goal If Steinman can't repeat what he did last year, and I honestly don't have any hopes in your backup as of now. I mean, I'm not saying that you guys will not get a better backup, but if Steinman sucked before Christmas and the other guy can't, like, find his groove, uh, you guys might be in trouble. But I think that um, Richie will make some move uh, at Christmas and, and fix that if something happened. But at the same time, Uh, like I heard at the Titan game, even if uh, the Moncton boat is um, is sinking by Christmas, you guys have a sump pump <laughs> to help you guys on your team, so you're all good to go. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, will be one of the hashtags that yes. uh, that we continue to use. Yeah, and we talked about it a little bit earlier. I mean, that's the question mark is how does Steinman improve on last year? I mean, he was dynamic for us one of the reasons we made the playoffs one of the reasons we got past Bay Como and you know there's going to be a grace period with Maverick Welk and he's going to need to figure it out but you know same issue with Simon last year he's coming from Junior B there's going to be a time where he's going to need to uh, figure it out but Johnny Rocket we truly appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us um, I know that there's some things that were going on this week and um, so yeah we really appreciate you taking the time to join us and uh, thanks for that Well, again, thank you very much for having me, guys. I wish you uh, a great year. I think Moncton will have some fun this year. Hopefully that the Titan will also have a fun few games, uh, maybe surprising the, the Wildcats. Uh, I sure hope that we won't lose all eight. I think <laughs> eight games we're playing against Something each other. Like that, yeah. So, yeah. So I can't wait to be back uh, during the trading deadline and have a great season. I do hate playing teams over and over in the preseason, but it does make uh... – make it tough to kind of get a gauge on what we're going to see this year so it's good on Corey and and johnny rocker for joining us but yeah I, i'm not really sure what to expect from charlottetown just because every year they've had that goaltender mm -hmm. and, you know i don't know if jacob gooby can even be traded back there uh, so. on the two-year window or whatever whether they'd go down that avenue uh brady james is another name they could go mm -hmm. if if it doesn't work but 
again, I think you'd have to have a conversation because I think they already have three 20 year olds or something like yeah. that. So it'll be interesting to see with them. And then Bathurst, I mean, based on preseason, they look pretty good. Well, you got to think there's a uh, goalie prog- prospect in our uh, organization, uh, Keegan Warren, who's got some uh, junior experience and uh, definitely would probably bring a lot more to the Islanders than uh, Nico Boudreau. Sure. With all, uh, with all due respect to the to Nico and his uh, to Nico, but it's, I'm just throwing names out there right now, you know. And uh, Keegan, the 14th round pick. I mean, if you can improve on a 14th round pick, that's good yeah. asset management. And you got to think if you know if going in not this upcoming season, but next season, Simon's eligible to return, and so is Welk. So that's automatically going to put Keegan Warren more or less on the outside looking in. Right. He's capable of playing in this league. Find him a place to play. Yeah. And then two years, and then a year and a half after that, it comes back to haunt us and we can't get the puck past Keegan mm-hmm. Warren um, year after year. But um, I, do, I, I do agree with, with Corey um, in terms of the division. I think it's a little bit more even. I don't think we're going to see three top contenders mm-hmm. with such a separation from – the bottom three and then again in Bathurst I mean Johnny has the strength of that team being goaltending which when was the last time their strength was in net yeah and, and that and makes a big right, difference though. with a younger team he's right though one of them will be will be shipped out um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happens at Cape Breton which we'll probably preview uh, next year you know it doesn't make sense next for week, them to, next year sorry yeah next <laughs> week doesn't make sense yeah. for them to keep Malota and Ruccia all season. Right. Right. If Malota's your your guy uh, for down the road, doesn't make sense to keep those two all year. Ruccia's 19. He would be an excellent pickup for a contending team that needs that solidity yeah. uh, in, in nets. And um, so I think we'll probably talk to uh, Pat about that next week. We absolutely will. Um, your transitions are killing it. This oh, thanks so much. Well done. Um, yeah, that'll do it uh, for this episode. So, again, thanks to Corey and Johnny Rocket for bearing with us this week. Um, thanks to you for bearing with me this week. <laughs> it's special shots, did it? Um, don't forget, the Wildcats are back in action this Friday against Bathurst in Bucktouche. Like Jeremy said a little bit earlier, it's going to maybe be like a rookie game inside of the very last uh, game of the preseason, which is always the don't get hurt game yes. of the preseason. Um, and hopefully we see a first overall pick uh, in the lineup. I believe we will. But, again, I have no information. We will be back next week finishing the Maritime Preview as we look at the Cape Breton Eagles with uh, second most guest appearances, Pat McNeil, um, which will get us set. Look at the preseason. Look at their season as well. Get ready for the regular season opener with back-to-back games in Sydney. That we can We confirm. will be at. We, we will, will be at. That's right. We are headed to Cape Breton for the first two games of the season, a hashtag Wildcast road trip. Um, we're having a lot of – we did one in St. John. We did the draft back two years. Yeah. We're getting a lot of the, a lot of miles now that we can travel mm-hmm. um, yeah. in there. Going to get my uh, Center 200 cherry popped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was looking forward yeah. to that. And How many rings have you seen now? Uh, games. Uh, obviously, Moncton, St. John, Halifax, Bathurst, Charlottetown. Uh, this is my first trip to Sydney, and draft wise, Cape uh, Sherbrooke and Quebec City. So I've seen Sherbrooke and Quebec City draft wise. I've also seen hockey wise. I've seen Quebec. They played Shawinigan uh, when we came home. Uh, I've seen Halifax, St. John, Charlottetown, and then this will be my first time in Cape Breton. So at some point, I am going to want to go up to Bathurst, and mm-hmm. at some point, maybe we should make a road trip out of it and. Stay on, uh, kick Johnny Rocket out of his place, stay in, stay in his house, make him go get a hotel and make him make a homemade meal. But we'll, uh, we'll definitely have to get up to Bathurst. The problem is every time they play up there, the weather's either crap That's it. or it's a Friday night and you got to leave a little bit early to get up yeah. there. So, uh, but yeah, we are going up to Cape Breton. So if you are joining us, let's get loud. Let's make some noise. Let's have some fun. And, uh, other than that, be safe this weekend. Just a reminder, the cats have canceled the cat's cup. Due to the weather, and we got a special guest uh, giving you a reason why they did that. This is Frankie McDonald. My own team says you live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Hurricane Lee's head towards New Brunswick on Sunday, September 
17, 2023. It's going to bring a lot of rain. Winds are going to be really strong in New Brunswick, especially in St. John, New Brunswick, and St. Stephen, New Brunswick, including Moncton, New Brunswick, and along the Highway 1 and the parts of Highway 2. It's going to bring really strong winds with a lot of rain, including Fredericks. It's going to bring every day for its very strong winds. It's going to cause sewers to back up in the streets. It's going to knock off power. It's going to cause a lot of power outages in New Brunswick, especially in St. John, New Brunswick, St. Stephen, New Brunswick, and Callis, Maine. It's going to affect parts of Maine, USA. I want every single person stuff. in New Brunswick yeah, to does. be prepared for Hurricane Lee. Make sure to stay away from beaches and don't go near shore since there will be big waves flash on beaches and shores and the coast areas in New Brunswick. I want every single person in New Brunswick to be extra prepared. Make sure to don't drive the car to the flood. Avoid the puddles or drive the car. And the right is going to bring yeah. power out. It's just, I recommend people have your flashlights, candles, crank up radio, extra batteries, generators, battery, battery operator entrance, and bottle water ready as well. It's going to bring it. a lot of yeah. pretty much, uh, power out. Uh, I'm not even going to finish the rest of that. That's so. Frankie McDonald's. If you have, it's Frankie McDonald from Sydney, yeah. Nova Scotia. Uh, the only uh, trustworthy meteorologist in all of Atlanta, Canada. 100%. Stay safe this weekend. For Jeremy, I'm Adam. See you next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wildcast Podcast. Follow us on social media at Moncton Wildcast.